Hey, Keith. Hey, Jonathan. So what you got for me today? Um, man, I've got this thing I built, and I just kind of want to show and tell. Um, okay. So basically, I'm you know the managing director of Action Analytics, and we have this collection of consultants that um, is working. It's a great team. And we've had these monthly team meetings. Historically, I would just always lead the team meeting. And uh, we've begun to experiment with uh, diversifying and distributing the roles that people play in the team meeting so that it isn't just always kind of the, 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 the Keith show, you know? So mm -hmm. um, I built this Tableau workbook that uses relationships and the modulo uh, calculation, which takes the, mm -hmm. the divides by something and keeps the remainder. Um, and all of this stuff that uh, we've been talking about, the one-to-one -one relationships um, in order to do some scaffolding, et cetera. And I built this workbook that dynamically um, allocates the different conversation roles to different team members for each team meeting based on the date. So you're having to do some sort of padding, using relationships to pad out the data. So you can have a row for each person for each date for e or for each role for each date or something. Right, right, right. So I'm going to walk okay. you through it. Um, basically, right. there's uh, kind of four different conversation roles. Somebody's the facilitator. Uh, somebody else takes uh, minutes and action items. Um, a third person is the timekeeper. And then a fourth person is the integrator, and it's their job to kind of weave everything together. Mm -hmm. And um, also on alternating uh, team meetings, we have a spotlight where uh, one of the consultants gets just like 25 minutes to show and tell, and, and the spotlight's on them. So that is kind of every Very other cool. team meeting. So mm -hmm. I just kind of wanted to build this thing that's dynamic and 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 kind of does it automatically and also experiment mm -hmm. with all this relationship stuff. So let me show you how it works. Uh, I'm gonna okay. share my screen here. Um, this is one of the Tableau dashboards that's not designed to be attractive, it's just functional. Um, and so uh, basically right now, uh, when we pick the consultant, it's picked to me and you see that I don't have any roles. And that's just the way that the modulo uh, works at the moment because of the way we're, um, uh, the number of people that we have. And I think that's great. I don't have to play any roles in the team meetings and they still happen. Mm -hmm. um, and there's this parameter up here where you can change the modulo and it says, whoop, you know, something's wrong. Um, and the reason that something is wrong is because, you know, one person could be double booked in into two roles and you don't want that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not really the goal of, of this brief conversation to give every little detail. Instead, what I want to do is just kind of like walk you through um, using some slides, the basic construction, and just talk mm -hmm. about the basic construction with respect to these things that we've discussed in the past about one-to-one -one relationships and scaffolding and padding and all of this stuff. Um, so basically at the heart of it, uh, every consultant has this numeric ID, which is their, their consultant ID. And... Um, that is the thing that we match the modulo on. And so I've got this parameter where I could change the modulo. It was at five. And when I moved it to six, there was a problem. Uh, and you can, you can move that around. And that's what you're dividing by to get the modulo. And when the modulo matches the consultant ID, then you've got a match for that role. Um, and the reason that it's a parameter is because we don't always have the same number of consultants. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, at this screenshot, we have 11 consultants, sometimes maybe we have 14, sometimes maybe we have nine. And so that, that parameter is kind of like a radio frequency dial and it lets you kind of dial what you're dividing by until you make everything fit and nobody's double booked. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then these things over here are for row level security so that when I put it on the Tableau server and somebody goes to the dashboard, they see what, when they have a role to play and it, and it kind of is attuned mm -hmm. to them. Um, okay, so this is the data source and it's basically got, it's, it's based in its cell and it's got that um, consultants worksheet that we were just looking at as the, as the root. And then I've got one-to-one -one relationships on these other two um, worksheets in the Excel file. Um, the days- uh, Can we, okay. You're going exactly where I was going. Right, yeah. So the, the days file yep. 
um, is just this list of uh, what I call monastic data. This is just my list mm -hmm. of days. Um, and I've got one record um, for each day. And most importantly, at the very top, the very first record is January of a date that's in the past of the year 2000. And that one record is there on purpose because I can use it as a scaffold. And, mm -hmm. and we defined in our earlier conversation that a scaffold is a record that I can paint data onto. And so there's occasions that I need just kind of one record to put other values onto. And so that's what that January 1st, 2000 um, record is for. And then the rest is just a bunch of days in our, in our current year mm -hmm. and into the future. Next logical table is this lead or backup logical table. That one also has a one-to-one -one relationship. And that guy just has two records in it. You're either a lead or a mm -hmm. backup. Um, yep. Because, you know, we have these team meetings every month. It isn't the case that every consultant is available for every team meeting. And so if you get dynamically allocated a role and you can't be there, you can just talk to your backup and they can do it for you. Yep. Okay. So uh, that is the basic construction of the data source. We've got kind of our list of consultants with a unique ID for each one where we do the modulo matching. Uh, some other stuff to do role level security so that when people go to it, they, they see their thing. And now uh, what I want to do is just kind of explain to you how I, how I built this thing. I think of it as like a big mm -hmm. calculator because basically there's no real data in it about the assignment of the roles. It's just a bunch of ingredients and the calculations and the parameters do the stuff. Um, and so uh, the main kind of driver behind this thing is um, what's called the conversation integer. And so the, the conversation roles are assigned based on the date. And so what I do is I turn um, the date into an integer. And um, the, the workbook has kind of two different modes. It's got the normal mode, which is just use the date that is the date. And then it's got another parameter that lets you pick a date. Uh, so we could see what would the role assignment be on some other date that isn't today, for example. Um, mm -hmm. And so this is where we're doing the scaffold, right? Because um, if it's the Can picked I date. Mm -hmm. Just talk about that for a second with yeah. the numbers, because not every, I don't know that everybody's familiar with that. So the, the turning the day into the integer the way uh, Tableau stores days is, or dates is internally, it's a number that's the number of days from uh, either January 1st, 1900, or in Excel sources, it's a, it's a different date. So it's that's like going to be some date. number. To, yeah. Yeah. So it's an epic date and uh, it's going to be something like 46,000 something nowadays. Totally. Yeah. And yeah. I don't really care so, what that number is. I just want to divide it by nine and keep the remainder. Mm -hmm. Yep. So all of this is really just about being able to dynamically distribute the roles in an even way mm -hmm. where nobody's double booked based on the date. But what the value of that integer is, isn't really that kind of germane to um, the way mm -hmm. the thing functions. Okay, so um, normally we're just in the else kind of condition of this if statement, but if you wanted to pick a date, that's when I scaffold the, the value from the picked date parameter onto that um, one record that's at the very top of the days where I can paint the, the parameter value on top of that um, record whose purpose is for um, scaffolding. Mm -hmm. So that's a way to... Um within the context of the relationships, we're kind of forcing, and I think of this as sort of we're forcing a join in a way so we can have something to work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about, yeah, it's about mm -hmm. having that, that thing there so, that there so that there's a there there to work with. Yep. Um, okay, so then what I've done is um, kind of created these series of calculations and you see they start with number one, number two and number three. And I'll often do that as a naming convention if, if there's calculations that build on each other. And basically mm -hmm. each conversation role kind of has this you know, series of, of um, calculations that build on top of each other. Uh, the first one is just to take that unique consultant ID number and, and modulo it with the parameter that's, that's my radio frequency mm -hmm. tuner. And, and keep and keep the remainder. 
Um, and so the parameter itself, that P dot modulo parameter, it just ranges from three to nine. And it lets me kind of move the dial around until I don't, I don't have any, any static and I have a clear signal uh, from, from my workbook. Um, and so this, you know, very simply is what um, that uh, calculation looks like. And you'll notice that each different role takes that conversation integer and, and moves it by a little bit. Uh, so, so the facilitation role takes that conversation integer and adds one. Uh, the minutes and action items role takes that conversation integer and adds two. And the spotlight takes it and adds three. Every different role needs to get the modulo from a different number. Otherwise they would all wind up being the same answer. So um, that's my first calculation is just to get the remainder, uh, the modulo. Uh, the, the second calculations are to um, identify when the modulos match. I'm, I'm basically saying um, if the modulo uh, for the role that I'm in is the same as the consultant modulo, um, then give me the consultant ID Otherwise, give me a null, right? So, mm -hmm. so basically, this is like a sum if. I, I only want the consultant ID when the consultant's um, uh, modulo matches the modulo for the role. This seems to be kind of the, the key piece of bonk your, your time's up or the it's your turn now. Right, yeah, equals. yeah. It's Wednesday, yep. uh, July mm -hmm. 29th, so... Kevin, you're in the facilitator role. Boop. This is this yep. is where we do that match. Okay, and then uh, the third of the calculations is basically turning that uh, ID into their name, so that I can present their name. So it's it's doing the same sort of thing, uh, but it's it's just getting their consultant's full name, so that that's the thing that I can present um, in the dashboard. Then from there, uh, what I do is I build this um, list of consultants, and this is where that other logical table comes in that has the two records in it where you're either the lead or the backup. And, um, and I basically say, if the record in that logical table that has two records in it is the lead record, um, then uh, I wanna say, um, give me the minimum or the maximum of the, the consultants who had that modulo uh, based on whether the, the day is an even day or an odd day. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically the results of the earlier calculations come back with multiple consultants that have a match. And uh, based on whether the day is even or odd, one of the persons gets sorted into the lead role and the other person gets sorted into um, the backup. And with Max and Min on that, you're guaranteed to only return two consultants. Right. Yep. Okay. And so um, that basically is the basic construction of what I've done. Now what I can do is just kind of show you a little bit of how it works. Uh, I built in all of this other stuff in here um, in order to have the spotlight maybe would occur uh, every single week or is it, or month because we have our team meetings monthly or does it occur on mm -hmm. alternating team meetings? Um, I built in the ability to have uh, the team meetings occur weekly or monthly during the first week of the month. Um, you can uh, kind of the, the row level security thing kind of defaults to showing you yourself. Uh, but if you wanted to pick a consultant, then you could, then you could pick which consultant has which role um, and then the different color legends kind of uh, shape uh, things here show you, are, are they a primary or are they a backup? Um, and then I, I would say kind of the most important thing is that the parameter that's doing the dialing can be moved up and down um, in order to tune when we have a new team member join the team. Um, and in this mm -hmm. case, uh, I, would, I would struggle to find, oh, here it is, like, in this case, dividing by six doesn't work because Alan winds up being both the lead and the backup. And that says, whoop, mm -hmm. there's a problem. Um, mm -hmm. And so basically I just wanted to show you this thing that I did uh, working with uh, everything that we've been talking about. Yeah, that's a, a neat use case. And then kind of highlighting also this place where the parameterization of it on the back end that 
having the alternating spotlight, the are you when are you going to meet weekly or first of the month and so on? Are you picking the date? Yeah, and all of it just bases from these tables that just has a list of consultants, mm -hmm. a list of days with an extra record in it for the scaffold in case I wanted to, to pick a date. Mm -hmm. And um, and then the lead of the backup in order to uh, force that join and, and do the min of the max. And so um, this is kind of a technique that I've used in other places as well. I have, uh, for example, an employee costing dashboard that um, really just has 365 records in it. And built on top of that simple, simple data set with 365 records, I build up all this other stuff with parameters and calculations about, okay, um, will they need healthcare? Um, will they be full-time engaged, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I can see, okay, what's, what's the scenario I'm looking at when, I, when we hire this person? So, so this type of like uh, build your own calculator is a technique that I've used in other places as well. And one of the pieces here with, to go back to kind of, okay, why is this relationships versus joints? Mm -hmm. Since this is a, a relationships podcast. Um, for me is that the, the place of these extra tables that you're adding in, you have control over how those tables get used and when they get used. And, and then relationships takes care of that aggregation. So if you had a table with multiple rows per consultant, you're not gonna end up with over aggregation on that and potentially assigning them too many roles mm -hmm. based on that, for example. So yeah, totally. this is great. Yeah. Thanks yeah, for sharing. That's that flexibility that, that the relationships build in. Okay, well, thanks for letting me show um, some kind of yeah. real world application of this stuff we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see you next time. All right, great, thanks, bye. Bye.